specifically the efforts of the parent community that I have watched grow over the last several years. For myself, I have found this community to be an integral part of raising a child with systemic JA, and I feel that many of you probably could agree with that. The parent community is where we draw strength, gather wisdom from other parents that have already walked this journey. It becomes the people we vent to, especially when we can't find people in our close um, community at home that can't really relate to a lot of these issues. Um, one, for instance, is specialty pharmacies. Um, that's just one of the many examples that we know a lot of people just, just can't relate to that, and we need that core group to kind of be able to go and talk to and bounce ideas off of. This community is who we celebrate our children's successes with, but it's also who grieves alongside of us when our children are unwell. So first, I want to take a moment to start to remember those who have lost their lives to SJA over this last year. So we have Jaden, Joel, Remy, Arham, and Anil, as well as others that we probably have not connected with. I think it's really important to remember these children, not only um, out of respect, but also so we remain focused on the why. So as a way to remember that every effort we make, every dollar we raise, every time we tell our story, um, every research study we participate in, every decision we make for our kids is for these kids. The kids that are here, the kids that are not here, the kids that have already passed, our kids, who have connected us all in a way that we never expected to be connected. It's also really important to highlight some of the positive stories of this year, the kids who are beating the odds. So here is, um, there's no favoritism here too, we just highlighted a few specific ones, um, just a few success stories. So earlier this year, the Systemic JIA Foundation um, did a newsletter highlighting Lily's fight with macrophage activation syndrome and her positive response to Gamafont, um, which has offered hope to many families. And here is B. She is uh, celebrating one year after a successful bone marrow transplant. I talked to her mom yesterday, and she is thriving and doing really well. So when I talk about the parent community, many of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, many of you, I think, are members of that group. Um, but I want to discuss a little bit more about the group specifically. So here is kind of what the Facebook group looks like for those of you who may not be in it and how the posts and stuff work. So um, this is essentially a Facebook-based group that is a safe place for parents of children who are diagnosed with systemic JA to share stories and information. Um, the community was started about seven and a half years ago by two moms who just wanted to connect the parents who got it. Um, a lot of them were in larger JIA groups and just realized that there were some differences and that there would be a benefit of having a closer-knit community. My son was diagnosed about six months after this group started, and I, um, after diagnosis we joined, and I joined the admin group a couple of months later. For those early families, the group was really more of a small knit place, close-knit place for people to update daily. It really wasn't a lot of questions um, about treatment or um, how families were doing. It was kind of just coming in and highlighting each child. But as the community grew, it grew into something else and something I think um, a lot more important. So there have been many things over the time that changed the dynamic of the group. For instance, um, several years ago, many of the families had been diagnosed for many years before they joined. Now we literally get people wanting to join where they're in the rheumatology office and they're saying, the doctor just said my child has SJA, I found your group, can we join? And that I think is really beneficial to families. Um, another thing that really helped was a couple of years ago, um, I attended a next gen conference and the value of that group um, became more apparent to me as I realized how important it was to not only keep it going, but to also grow the group in a unified fashion. Um, we joke sometimes that if you mention SJA on social media, I will find you. <laughs> and there, some of you are laughing because it's true. <laughs> and, um, but that has also kind of happened to other families. Now we have a lot of you guys that are grabbing families and saying, hey, this person mentioned SJ, can you add them? And that is so beneficial. So we now have over almost 1,200 members from 30 countries, representing around 900 patients is our last estimate. We are 81% mothers and 19% um, men fathers 
And um, this actually is a better stat than about two or three years ago where we were like 92 to 8%. So a lot of the dads are joining. I think a lot of you moms are adding the dads sometimes, which is great too. And we do see the fathers becoming more active, which I think is very important. Um, when discussing the growth, growth, growth of the group, I think one thing to keep in mind is that you can have a huge group but not a lot of interaction. For us, we do have a lot of interaction, which is really beneficial. So we average about 170 posts, 2,000 comments monthly, and usually about two to 4,000 um, other interactions. So that may be a like, a view, that sort of thing. So my hope personally for this community has always been to act, be an active hub for sharing resources and information. Um, but also a place where families can connect and form support systems and where we can partner with like the System AJA Foundation and just really grow that support. Um, I think we've all worked together really well in making this happen. And um, another thing I do want to highlight though that we've worked on as a community are community fundraisers. So you're going to see many of our kids, there's my little guy right there, with the heart t-shirts. I know many of you have them on. So when we did this first shirt that he's wearing, there were 50 names. The new shirt that we just did, has 360 names representing over 500 of our children. And every single sale we get more requests to add kids. We're actually running out of room. The newest shirts have hearts on the front and the back. So I'm excited to say that our efforts have working together as a community, and it's really been a community effort of sharing this link. We have sold over 1,000 of these shirts to our family and friends, raising over almost $11,000 in the last two and a half years. So another thing that happened is in January, the Systemic JA Foundation was able to get fundraising started on the Facebook platform. And that has been really popular, especially with extended family and friends who can very easily set up a, um, a fundraiser. I know a lot of us have done this during conference. It's one click, super simple, so you can recommend that to family and friends that want to help. And um, as of last count, I believe Rosh, we checked last night recently, and that has raised over $20,000 for the foundation, which is huge. That's an amazing effort for such an easy way to fundraise. So just to kind of wrap up, my hope is that with all this information that you guys get today and that you realize how an integral part it is and how important it is for us to really be unified and to really stick together, um, I think it's a vital and important part for all of us living with a child with rare disease um, to stay unified in that effort and try to work together for the better of all of our children. And so um, next I'm going to introduce Phil, and he's going to speak to you a little bit about foundation efforts and his story as well.